So Malvika, uh, welcome to this debriefing session. Uh, congratulations on scoring a 730. Uh, good improvement of verbal 31, uh, 35 to a verbal 41. So how does it feel? I think it feels great. It, it's been it's been quite a long journey. And so finally to take it to end has been, I mean, it, it's been a rewarding journey. So you started with a verbal score of 35 and I saw your ESR as well. Um, so you had a good benchmark to begin with. So how did you plan your improvement from that point to, to this? Yeah. Um, so um, um, like I said, I'd, I'd first taken the exam in March where I'd scored a 680. And then um, uh, it was close to May when I started, level, when I approached EGMAT for taking up the course the first time. And I think I, I spent close to about two months uh, preparing mm -hmm. for it. It was a very structured preparation that I did. But unfortunately, when I when I took the exam two months after the preparation, my score had only improved from a 680 to 690. Okay. After that, I realized that, you know, um, I need to get back and actually figure out where am I going wrong. Um, and that's when I approached the EGMAT team. Uh, mm -hmm to kind of help me with, with the way ahead, you know? So, so they did a thorough analysis for me. Who did you um, approach? Uh, so I, I wrote to the team and Dhananjay got back. Oh, and DJ got he, back, okay, yeah. So he actually, uh, I mean, he was very prompt to reply and he actually created a video analysis of my ESR, uh, pointing out that, you know, these are my insights and the, and this is the reason as to why I'm suggesting the next course of action. So. Um, so um, with that, I think it was a very, very structured approach to follow post that, to, to practice a certain set of questions on scholaranium, mm -hmm. to go back to the concept only in some of the sections. And yeah, so, so, so I think it was only uh, in the second attempt that I got back and actually worked closely with the EGMAT team that I was able to uh, make that jump from a V35 to V41. So, okay, so you had this V35, 690. Then what did you focus on? What, what, what insights did you get from your ESR? Or did DJ, uh, was DJ able to extract? Yes. So, so I think he, with Quant, he mentioned that, that all you need to do is just maintain your score. And if you have to, then you go back to geometry and, and maybe practice the concept files mm -hmm. once again. Um, but he said your major improvement is going to come from the verbal section uh, and that too from the uh, CR section. Mm -hmm. Because I was at a lower percentile in CR compared to the other two sections. Mm. And um, uh, so, so, and he also mentioned that SC actually, I had a better ability like as per my scholaranium platform, but I hadn't been able to perform up to that ability in the actual test. Mm. Um, so, so that's where I got back to the concepts and CR, I think I actually went back to all concept files. I mean, with verbal, because the first time that I had done my preparation, I'd taken up the verbal, uh, the verbal section first and then moved to quant and, and I hadn't been very consistent with, you know, even keeping up with the quant question, the verbal questions. So I thought of taking up the course again and focused more on the CR section as as uh, in particular, and uh, I think it was the whole free thinking approach that that helped me a lot with respect to improving my CR score. Um, and yeah, a quant was more or less the same. I only got back to answering only the incorrect uh, hard questions from the Scholaranium platform and just just maintained my performance at that same level. So, so when you got to critical reasoning, and I'm, I'm actually looking at um, your. Uh, while you were talking about it, um, I was looking at uh, your dashboard in critical reasoning. You I mean, uh, I, I, you've probably gone through these twice because I see the timing over here, 64 minutes uh, in this and, and 103 minutes on 100 plus minutes on the application files. But, but like really I said, good. All of the well, I, did, I did twice because I, I just felt more comfortable that way. So when you did this and when you went through, let's say the inference module or, or, or the assumption module uh, during this, the final attempt, um, what insights did you get that that were when, that you kind of missed out on when you were going through these for the first time? I think broadly, uh, what went wrong in my first approach was a that it was siloed. Like uh, it was when I would complete SC, I wouldn't go back to it. I would focus only on CR, and so test readiness wasn't something that I focused too much on. So I essentially forgot the SC concepts while I was doing CR. Mm -hmm. So, so one is that thing that I that I absolutely focused on in my second attempt. Uh, the other being that um, so you did the test readiness quizzes that DJ sent over and all of those. 
Got Absolutely. It. He would he would tell me what mix of questions to follow, and and I didn't really stop at that one interaction that I had with him because like every few days I would get back and check if I, if I'm on the right track. So so there was constant feedback that way, mm. um, and um, and the other thing is that uh, with the first attempt, I think I was I was focusing more on just doing a lot of questions. But I didn't really spend too much time analyzing and understanding as to where exactly am I going wrong. Mm. And especially with verbal, I think uh, with the second time around, I understood that that's absolutely not the intent. I can I can choose to do about whatever, just just about five to ten questions a day, but make sure that I absolutely understand why did I get this right or why why couldn't I get this right. So uh, so with the concept files, I wasn't too much of a change but i think with practicing questions and the mix of questions that i practice i think there was a whole lot of change that way and again you were probably deliberately applying pre thinking as you were doing it this time absolutely pre thinking i i think it's like like a magical potion i mean you you uh, it just takes off so much of your work because you've done that much homework before you refer to the options hmm. so yeah i think um, even with i I kind of think that applies both to SC and CR because uh, you got to make sure that you know concept is not just about the factual information that's being told, uh, but about just just you know imbibing that method of solving a, a particular question. Mm. Uh, I somehow feel it also helped me a lot on the final exam front because um, I was like like I did the quant section first and. Uh, when I when I did the question, I was a little disappointed in the last section of the exam, like last section. Last part of quant, okay. Because um, I sort of felt that you know I could have done better at it, and so that was kind of on my mind. Mm. Um, and the verbal section, I I felt like I was breezing through it, but at the same time, I had because I had practiced it so much, and I knew that you know it it almost became second nature to to me, like when I was handling those questions. So while I was doing the section, I had no idea, you know, that this is going to I'm going to score well, but it's only when I saw the score that it was a sign of relief. Before but, again, it, yeah, yeah, I'm 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 sure that it was it it was coming naturally to me because I had practiced the approach. Okay, now. You also use Scholarium. You talked about Scholarium a bit. So, how, um, what value did you derive from a the you know in Scholarium you have three things essentially. You have those cementing quizzes or ability quizzes, which are we call them expert defined quizzes. Then you have the custom quizzing engine where you can define what you want to do, and then you have the detailed solution. So, how what was, I mean, how did you really make use of the platform, and what was valuable for you? I think I've absolutely followed the process that that you know EGMAT suggests mm -hmm. in terms of going with the stage two and stage three of preparation. So mm -hmm. so overall that was the approach that I had. Uh, but towards the end, I think uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I was I was completely more into so I would take custom quizzes mm -hmm. as uh, Dhananjay had suggested, and at the same time. Uh, go into in-depth analysis of the approach. And if I didn't get it right, or, you know, I mean, obviously I understood the solution as to what the recommended solution is, but at the same time, I would also go through all the notes and questions that people had raised mm -hmm. because a lot of time that would explain as to why the initial method that I adopted was incorrect. So, so I think that also uh, helped me, helped me to a great extent. Got it. Okay. Yes. So um, I think we have another three to four minutes. So let's kind of go off from your, your GMAT preparation to, um, to, to, to what do you want to do next? You already have an MBA. We were talking about it earlier uh, that, that uh, uh, you're looking at uh, Cornell, you're looking at uh, two year Stern MBA and uh, MBA from Stern. And then did you say Kellogg one year? Yes, Kellogg one year. Kellogg one year MBA. And, um, and, 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 and so um, you're, we were talking a bit about H1B, but then other than that, um, for product management and brand management, these are two areas that you want to go into. Uh, uh, was one of your questions, which other schools should you look at? Yes. I mean, uh, if there are schools that stand out with respect to product management profiles and, and mm -hmm. that you think that I should be considering, then I'd love to hear your suggestions. I think the, the constraint that you have is, is the fact that you want to be on the East Coast. Otherwise, I would have recommended uh, uh, UCLA Anderson as a great school for product management. Uh, they have a really good emphasis over there um, on, on that. Um, Ross, we talked about tech and product management earlier. I think that's, that's, that's very good too. Um, 
I would have even said, so uh, these two, I, 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 I like their emphasis on product management. Uh, but, but beyond that, I also uh, look at Berkeley House, is, is what okay. I would say. Um, so more around because we're talking about tech and, 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 and I think um, UCLA Anderson and Ross for me are more holistic schools. They'll give you more options, especially given your brand management background. So um, they'll give you a lot more options uh for tech and in, in other industries as well so right. so and think, these will all be two year two year programs I they will be two year programs having said that i will also tell you two year programs have a lot more scholarship money a b which which does reduce the cost and b you also have the opportunity to earn during your second year so okay. you have that internship and then in your second year you can take and in lieu of courses you can take some internships that are paid Right, right. And uh, I mean, because I'm also looking at, at kind of an industry switch. So um, I think I, I, I might consider two year programs as well, particularly ones that stand out in terms of product management, because again, um, like you want to ensure that all that time has been put to good use. So yeah, makes sense to consider these options. The well. other piece that I would really just say is that uh, when I did my, my MBA, and I didn't have an MBA the way you do. Uh, but but I had done five internships during my two years. So what it wow. meant was post my MBA, my pre-MBA experience was only 20% of my resume. Wow. Because, of, because you had those five internships. And then so what you did before, in my case, I didn't want it to matter because it was purely research. I was one of those geeky researchers prior to that. Um, and in your case, you would want it to matter, but having those four to five internships in various verticals shows a certain degree of versatility, which I think would be very valuable in your case. And so these internships were arranged by the school or did you reach out and network? So for me, the, it was very interesting. So I wanted to work for startups, and uh, but I did want a paying internship as well. I mean, I practically, even though I had a full fellowship, I had no money uh, in business school. So I needed to earn some money in my uh, after my first year. So um, I got a paid internship, which was with, with, with EMC, that was tech and uh, was, I'd say, IT and process. It, it wasn't ideally an internship that I wanted to do, but it paid very well. So, right. so with that, I got a second internship, which was an unpaid internship with a startup where I was uh, the director of marketing. So this was an unfunded wow. startup, but, but they had no marketing person. I said, I'm going to do it free of charge. And, and I did that. So that was very interesting. So I worked there for three months. And then based on that second internship, uh, you know, a few other, I made a few other contacts and, and then I told them I'm available. So that led to a third internship with Fidelity, which was in their tech side, uh, tech product management side. So um, that's where I got that. That was a peer internship as well. Then once you start making these contacts, you know, something, I mean, everyone has, any place that's growing will always have work and they'll need good people and they don't want to spend time finding good people. Right, yes. So, so, so uh, um, what I did from my part was, so, so in my case, the school didn't do a whole lot, uh, but what I did from my part was to really say, okay, if you're willing to give me an internship, I'm going to work with, with the people, with, 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 the, with the Office of International Students at, um, at my school, which is Babson, to, to figure out how do I convert a credit to an internship. Oh, yeah. that you that, can pay me legally yeah yeah so i did the, all of that myself but but what first i got the opportunity and said this is what i would do so the idea was to lower risk for everyone so by the time i had that third internship then after that you know i i i, I could just pick and choose because right. then you are uh, uh, then you are one of those few people who who have this much experience in in, in the first year and yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. so it's, it's about getting there. Right. Yeah. I mean, once you're there, I think it, it's entirely up to you as to how you chart out your, your time at business school. Yeah. But it's, it's, I think it's more of getting to the right place for now. And yeah, like I was mentioning earlier, if, is it even the right time for it? So, yeah. So just it is, has to be I mean, I mean, the demand for MBAs has never been stronger. Um, just to really tell you the difference, uh, you know, for my first internship, which was at EMC, I had to write 91 cover letters uh, before I got that one. So, so, and then after that, 
every cover letter that i wrote led to a job wow so so it was just a complete flip but those 91 was where 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 the learning piece came uh where where all the learning came from and, and i'm really thankful for those 91 yeah all right malvika i uh, really good talking to you um and, absolutely and... yeah thank you so much for taking out the time and and you've been very patient with answering my questions so thank you so much for that uh not a problem it's my pleasure uh, i'll have dhananjay reach out uh, to you for asking for a review and right. uh, but but yeah other than that good luck and and keep us informed as to what which school you choose and where you get in thank you so much thank you all right thank you bye 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 bye